Government corruption has never been more prevalent or caused more harm. It's why extremism is on the rise. It's why the financial gap between the haves and have nots has never been wider. And it's why our planet is at risk of an extinction level tragedy. That's why I need your help to keep exposing the truth about the rot on both sides of the aisle. Become a supporter or a friend of the show today by clicking on the coffee link in the description box below. Friends of the show, join me on a Zoom hangout once a month, and you guys can ask me any questions you want, and I can get to know you better. But the most important reason to help is to keep the show alive. Together, we can and will save our country and our planet. Thanks in advance and enjoy the show. So as of now, here's where things stand. 13 states have automatic anti-abortion trigger laws in place. Some of them are activated immediately. Other states take a little while or they have to be signed in to law by certain people. Um, in addition, though, there are other states that are chomping at the bit that are likely to now pass new legislation to make it illegal. Legal, and almost none of them have exceptions for rape or incest. These people are disgusting. They are vile. They are reprehensible. They don't give a damn about life. And they're pro-rape. Um, as of this morning, though, a court temporarily blocked the Louisiana trigger law that should have immediately gone into effect to uh, anti-abortion. This is because a clinic filed a lawsuit that, and they stated that the law was vague and that it failed to prevent arbitrary enforcement. Now, if you've been following the show for a while, you guys are going to remember a story I shared about my cousin's wife. She was 14 when her stepfather raped her and she became pregnant. When she told her mother, he denied it, of course, and her mother believed him. Her mother took his side over her own daughter and kicked her out of the house. So what do these religious zealots have planned in situations like that? Are they going to take in 14-year-old girls, 13-year-old girls? Are they going to raise them as their own? Now, luckily, she was able to get a safe abortion. But what would have happened to her? What would happen to her now? These anti-choice idiots are the most self-centered, self-absorbed people on the planet. They cannot think outside of their own pampered existence. They can't comprehend that others don't live the same experiences that they do. They don't have the same families. They don't have the same privilege that they do. And think about, you know, beyond finances, beyond the logistics, beyond where are you going to live in a situation like that? What does a pregnancy do to a 13, 14, even 16-year-old body? The internal physical damage is permanent. Even if they can get surgery to put everything back in place where it belongs, it doesn't mean they're not going to have problems down the road. It's unreal how selfish they are. So let's take a look at who's to blame besides Craven Republicans, of course. Corporations, including Walmart, Pfizer, AT&T, Exxon, Citigroup, CVS, Comcast, Anheuser-Busch, Mobile, Walgreens, and UPS gave collectively millions and millions of dollars to anti-women religious zealot lawmakers who have pushed these extreme abortion bans. And they play both sides of the fence because a lot of them talk a good game. They pretend to care about women. Oh, we're all for women rights. But then they do this shit. Then they go literally fund these monsters, these anti-women, misogynistic, sexist monsters. In fact, AT&T was one of the biggest contributors to these anti-women nut jobs in the Republican Party. But last year, no, it was 2020, their CEO, John Stanky, he wrote in a diversity and equity report that they put out, something like that, that one of their core values was gender equity and the empowerment of women. They are so full of shit. And if they're not, it's time for them to step up and prove it. So 
Here's one thing we all can do. We can let them all know, all of these corporations, how we feel. We can write them letters, make phone calls. We can show them with our hard-earned cash, most importantly. But in addition to these anti-women mega donors, I want to give a shout out to Ruth Bader Ginsburg, who's no longer with us. So she won't hear it, but she is also to blame. And I say this and I bring her up because I am sick and tired of seeing all these yes, queen, RGB posts. They're all over the place. Oh, if RGB were here, guess what? When RGB was here, Obama asked her to retire. She was like 80 years old at the time. She had been fighting cancer. And he was concerned, rightfully so, that his successor would be a Republican and that that person would get to choose her replacement. She refused to step down. She said, oh, no, I enjoy my work. That is beyond selfish. 